Okay, can you guys hear me now? Is this any better? Let me know if that's any better. I'm gonna go to my channel and delete that failed Lumitone experiment. So let me just delete that previous one. I can't believe no one told me I had, didn't have audio. downside it's latent for me now so i don't get to play i don't get to have as much fun as i wanted but it's okay voice is gonna be better now uh for some reason it's it's mono so or am i coming out of one speaker with my audio or both you can can you hear my voice and my stereo is everything or not stereo but is everything coming through both speakers talking stream so it's cool i don't mind if my voice is like inaudible or whatever i just want to make sure the music can be heard look how delayed that is here's when i play i guess it's got a little better Okay, yeah, like I was saying before, uh, okay, how does this work? This keyboard can be tuned anyway, so now it's got a completely different mapping. Um, I can tune it however I want. It doesn't carry any tuning information. It's just MIDI and mapping information. So right now I'm currently playing in 34 notes equal temperament. When I was playing the synth, I was playing in 34 ne or 31 neji, which is a, a harmonic just intonation. But it's hard to get my harmonic just intonations into piano tech. So when I'm playing this sound right now, this will be 31 equal. Uh, no, I didn't. And I think um, Mike Vitali is here. Mike Vitali is the one who automatically generated this mapping for me. I'm going to play that here in a bit. This is a tetracot mapping in 34 notes. I've really been loving this tetracot mapping, particularly in 34 uh, notes equal just intonation. So I'll be playing that in a little bit. Um, the presets, I don't use those though. I mean, technically this is a preset, but I, I redid the coloring for it. This is a, a different mapping. Uh, this is a custom mapping that somebody gave me. 
that is harmonic rows for 31. Uh, like. But then it's like linear up here, etc. Um, but I'm just playing in this one for now. But it's really great because we can just start to reach for more like. Or, you know, things like. That's a neutral, neutral add four, five, flat seven. We could do down flat seven. I kind of like taking this and going. Or something like that, you know? There's just so many new harmony options. Now, like I said, I've got latency in order for you to hear it. So I don't get a play as ripping fast as I would like to, honestly. Like even that's like, it's like quite delayed. So I gotta be careful with what I play. Uh, but no, this is awesome. In case you guys weren't here when I first said it, I am the only person in the world with a broken Lumitone. Um, if I just play this note a bunch, did you just see that what happened? Watch. There's something wrong with this note. So they're actually sending me a new one. I've got to send this one back to the factory and they're going to test it and try to figure out what went wrong with it. But as far as I know, 50 Lumitones have been delivered to people and I'm the only one with a broken one. Isn't that weird? Did you see that? See that? It's so weird. There's all kinds of other glitches. Check this out. So this key is so busted that if I hold it and then I change mapping, it freezes, it freezes that part of the old mapping. See, look at that. This is super glitch. And if I let go, it flips to the other mapping that should be happening. And also what's weird about this is if I press this down and then press other notes in the cluster, their lights don't come on. But if I let go of it, then their lights will like freeze on. Or some, I don't know, it's weird. There's so many glitches with it. But it's cool. weird uh that's that, that's the exact key that i originally remember i messaged you and i was like hey i have my lumitone out of the box for like two minutes and i found this weird key that feels different than all the others and i you suggested to calibrate it they suggested the same thing i calibrated it and it worked it fixed the problem but then a week later i was playing this like d minor seven and all of a sudden the keyboard just like exploded with light and then for some reason now that entire cluster is just like broken you know so, I mean, the, it still fires MIDI, it's just the LED routing is, is kind of broken. It's weird. Here you go, guys. Here's some harmony. So, it's a cleaner major chord than what you normally get. Here's kind of a normal minor. Here's sub minor. Sub minor, normal minor seven. We can do sub minor seven everything.
shouldn't have froze. I don't know why that's freezing. <laughs> through the speakers yeah but then I have to mute my mic every time I talk because technically I've got a feedback loop going through my mic right now so and not make OBS like shit the bed yet. I think I need to buy a mixer. You want a harmonic seven? Sure. And a poorly tuned 11th harmonic. To me, that doesn't really sound like the 11th harmonic. It sounds like a 19 against 26. But whatever. Most people would hear it as an 811. something else too here you go close to the 13th and then oh maybe it is too much poly press it they'll all go off would love to hear some less functional more yeah well i'm not a jukebox so i don't like you requesting what i play so just don't ever do that again but sure i'll play you some weird stuff hold on one second but just for the future record i play whatever i want period end of story forever until i die i will never take requests ever and i never do so let's see here i'll play in tetracot for you
If I was a jukebox, I'd be taking nickels or something. You know what I mean? I'm an artist. I'll just play whatever I feel like playing. I like playing the functional stuff in 31 because it just sounds good. I don't like playing that kind of stuff in 12 because it's just so boring and it sounds like poorly tuned. But in 31, you can really get those amazing kind of... You can really get those amazing kind of things that you can't get elsewhere. In 31 uh, on a keyboard. What's your opinion on the default color layout of the Lumitone? It comes with 8 or 10. I don't really like any of them. I've done all my own color maps for everything. I've got, you can see that this is a different mapping, but it's got the same color map as this. I'm, I'm keeping it consistent for mine. This inner line, this line right here also isn't blue. It's actually gray. On the camera though, it shows as blue, like this one right here. It's actually gray. This timbre is good. Yeah, it's a little too washy for me. I'm going to switch it to a uh, saw wave and put you all through the ringer. So just give me one second here. Now, this is a 34 note uh, Neji. So this Neji is built out of 73 and 3, which I really like a lot for this particular. I'm going to go ahead and build a timbre here really fast. Oh, let me switch back over. Okay. Let me get velocity sensitive. Too much uh, velocity sensitivity here now. See, look at all this work I had to do in order to be a jukebox. How do I get to... That wasn't the one. Here we go. Now I have to change the tuning. turn on after I play it. See? Unless I switch mappings. It's so broken. And then if I hold it, switch mappings. Now this mapping is halfway between the two mappings. It's kind of really busted. I don't know why it's like that. It's, uh, for so I don't know why it's like that. I wish it was not so broken. I'm going to play this Tetracot stuff in 34 instead. Or in 
to piano timbre instead. Tune it. amazing but is it terribly expensive uh yeah it's pretty expensive i'll say um it's pretty expensive and it's also quite disappointing that it's so expensive and it came with a broken note but i can't really hold that against them because they've helped me out and they've made sure to make it right and um nobody else has had that problem so you know if we start seeing a wave of reports of lumitones that have this problem then i think it's terribly expensive and not good but, uh, hi, KJH, um, do you have to learn entirely new muscle memory, or can you sort of extrapolate it? Depends on the mapping. This mapping, you have to learn, like, entirely new muscle memory. Because it's all, because to play major, I have to go up, over, down, over, 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 wait, up. But in the 31 like this, this is just like a keyboard. Like this would be like C. It's really a lot easier that way. It just depends on the mapping you're in. at all seems like is every note uh is every button a note yes every button's a note i mostly play in the middle because the note down here is the same as the note up here er. so by playing in the middle you have access to all the notes right so like it's not that i have to play in the middle but there's no point not to because i could reach any of the other notes from the middle like if i just played down here at the bottom then there would never be a reason for me to go up. It, it's hexagonal and it's generalized. So for instance, like if I play this shape here, that's the same everywhere. So unless I want to like plane or go parallel, there's not really a point in me like leaving the center area. to modulate I'll leave it but even then I'm gonna stay in the center because like say I want to modulate to like three or something it would just be there. see I didn't really leave 
leave the center. I just <laughs> went to there. What about far left and far right? Well, I'm avoiding playing the far right right now because since I've got this open in my DAW, it has an octave issue, but the bottom is low end. When I was playing in this tuning, I, I was playing more of the full range, but this tetracot mapping, I'm, I'm wrapping my head around. It's not at all like normal map. Like if I go back to here, I've put the most amount of time in 31 so far, just because it's the most general. There we go. So like here, this is a lot easier to navigate for me. It's easier for me to move around at too, just because I'm more familiar with the shapes of 31. Pitch ears adore this. It's so satisfying to play with. Are you at the point where all these microphones just feel as familiar to ears equal temperament? Um, uh, yeah, no. Um, they just sound different. I don't like equal temperament. I mean, I'm playing in equal temperament right now. You're talking about 12 note equal temperament, right? Um, 12 note equal temperament to my ears sounds really generalized. I can pretty much pick it out. Somebody sent me a bunch of clips the other day of like eight different chords and different tunings and I like instantly picked out the one that was in 12 because I thought it sounded like <sighs> you know in like the matrix where they like eat that slop it's like the mushy soup that's just gray and looks tasteless and bland that's what 12 note equal temperament sounds like to me like that food from the matrix and be fine I guess but when you have a bunch of other options why bother you know the weirdest thing for me is getting used to not moving left and right but moving right and up right and down left and up left and down that's probably the hardest part of the lumitone for me so far so frustrating.
it's so frustrating. Watching the only broken Lumitone in the world. Uh, this is a keyboard from Space that allows me to do things that other keyboards don't, like hit poly limits on my computer and play chords like this. out harmonic devices on this thing I figure out harmonic devices in my brain and then I get the mechanics of it on the instrument so the majority of I mean there's like some voice leading things that I found that are like unique to the instrument in particular but you know I, uh, I sort of know I'm aware of all the harmony I'm playing like the split six Buzzkill. I think that's what it is. I don't know. It never happens before. That's only a streaming thing, I'm pretty sure. That shouldn't have happened. It's just lagging. See? Broken Lumitone. See that? That's crazy, right? And about this, then it goes away. I hope that uh, I'm gonna play a little functional stuff. I mean, it's gotta be like a OBS thing, you know what I mean? Because I play in. I've never had that problem until I started streaming. I 
always think in J.I. Doesn't matter what I'm playing. Well, I more so think in generalized structures. And then the only thing that those exist in are, are really J.I. in your head how much music do you figure out experimentally on instruments to me the instruments are a filter so I have like a musical essence internally and then I push that through a filter and the filter deforms it and transforms it in whatever way it wishes um, music for me is very much an internal process though and I very little does the instrument decide what I mean like this instrument changes what I play because it's generalized and hexagonal and there's certain things about it that are unique guitars have certain unique qualities that make it feel different pianos make me play different but it's not really that I'm thinking different it's that I'm thinking about my music and then it's being deformed but through a prism of the filter so you know instruments are filters instruments have more of a barrier in the filter than others uh it depends on how good i am at the instrument it depends on the construction of the instrument um and i don't tend to think of them as barriers i tend to think of them more as unique idiosyncratic filters so like on a guitar i'm going to be prone to not having clusters of notes next to each other i'll probably have larger jumps or skips or more fifths and fourths or more open voicings on a piano i'm going to be able to get a lot more crammed voicings like on this i'll be able to play in more easily so i could take a more complex voicing and get away with moving it more freely uh, it just depends on the instrument Wind instruments being monophonic requires me to, you know, think a little bit differently in that regard. I'm going to change timbres. That was nice piano vibes. I'm going to go back to space for a little bit. Let me just change the LFO so it's not quite as intense. Or not? Is it just gonna break? I think my everything just broke. Okay.
colors be changed? Yeah, you can do whatever colors you want. Uh, are the notes color coded? Yeah, you can color them however you want. Mine, the gray row is like my middle chain of fifths. The blue row is like my sh my two two steps sharp uh, chain of fifths. Red is like a uh, one cent sharp. I don't know. The DSS is, works like this. <laughs> Maybe this will work. Check, check. It won't work. Check, 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 check. Hold on. Maybe this will work. Um. Check, 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 check. check. You guys should hear me twice. Check. Should be okay.
Have I noticed any problems? Yeah, yeah, definitely. This note's broken. I'm the only owner of a broken Lumitone in the world. Just watch. See? Now, I don't think yours is gonna do that. Because nobody else's has. I guess I just have bad luck. See? Weird, right? See? Very strange. Other Lumitones don't do that. See? And it's got some other weird things because of that. See? Now I have frozen that section of the layout because it's busted. Very weird stuff. Yes, they're replacing it completely. They're gonna send me a new Lumitone entirely and then I'm gonna ship this one back to them. And then that will allow me, or that will allow them to test it and figure out what went wrong with mine. Apparently, uh, yeah, I've been pretending it's a feature. I'm, I'm pretending that my Lumitone became sentient. Another thing that is weird about the Lumitone, for anyone who's thinking about buying one, be aware of this as well. My mod wheel slips when, it puts, when it's put below 15%. And this has been a bug that's been reported on multiple Lumitones. I wouldn't say it's a game breaker problem, but watch. Under a certain amount, the mod wheel slips to zero. See? Back to zero. It can be really annoying if you're trying to use a LFO or not an LFO, like a filter, and you want to like get it all warm down there, but you don't want it to be all the way zero on the filter. Like, uh, that's the only other problem I have with the Lumitone. This slipping, and then the fact that I have a broken key. But otherwise, it's it's amazing. I would buy a second one easily, and I might. I'll probably buy a second one for so I can have like um. 540 notes so then I can have like you know one through 512 of the harmonic series MIDI. You can map it any way you want. Oh yeah, I guess what they could probably do with the firmware is just make it so zero is like that entire there's like that like a 10 percent window at the bottom that's all zero that would make it like really really good at that point if anything it might even make it kind of i don't know it's only bad if if uh you know you are trying to play with like here i'll just try to show it again see the pitch wheel to have that in the center too 
Oh, that's cool. I love the pitch wheel. It's like so, it's like so firm. You know what I mean? I'm not used to feeling a pitch wheel that's that, like, look at this pitch wheel. Look at its rebound. Oh, you can't see it on the camera. Okay, watch. This thing actually takes a lot of power to push, which I like because you can really like get wild with it. How much do these go for? 3,500 or 4,000 or something. Well, yeah, Charles, the layout's customizable. So it just depends on like, this is a 53 note layout. This is a uh, different 31. This is a 29 note layout. Uh, this is a 22 note layout. This is uh, the same one I have on patch one. Uh, this is a 12 note layout. Um, this is a 31 note layout, but in two different forms. So I can just basically play whatever, whatever tuning systems I want to play in. to just just play I mean it just feels really good yeah I hope more people buy this because then that means Lumitone can keep making production runs I imagine they'll fix the mod wheel in the next like main production run that they do um, you know everybody who's got the mo everybody who's got the Lumitone right now is very much a beta tester so uh, but we also got discounts. I think I paid 3000 for 3200 for this one or 3500 which is discounted from the original price they're going to have it at eventually. Mm, poly function? say like if you're into microtonality you pretty much got to get this if you if you can you know if you could manage it because this is about the first thing I've ever played in my life that genuinely lets me be free in terms of my intonation I have physically tuned my acoustic piano that's sitting over there you know, I've played on other microtonal instruments. This this right here is a microtonal instrument. But this is really the first time, like, as far as I'm aware. I mean, there's, like, the Strizzo. There's, like, the U238 or whatever that only had, like, three or four produced. There's, like, the original Terpestra keyboard. There's the Continuum fingerboard. Those are, like, the other microtonal solutions that are out there. And honestly, I just... Those aren't the ones for me. This one's way better. I can't uh, speak highly enough of the team uh, that's behind it because they've been really, really receptive to fixing any time I've had a problem or any time I've had a concern, you know, they're like, they're like right there ready to help me.
like lags because of the stream. I keep getting taken out of the, the flow, you know what I mean? See, now I'm out of the flow. Very frustrating. take me to set this lumitone up took it out of the box played it or took it out of the box plugged it in plugged it into my computer put it on a 31 note map opened up my DAW, put something in 31 and then just started playing it took me about three minutes to start actually playing Beyond YouTube. YouTube, do you ever play live? Just think about how nice it would be to walk into a cozy venue, listen to all sorts of microtonal music. Uh, I used to play live. Nowadays, there's just not really a point for me to. I'm a voice professional in terms of my day job, and music now is like the center of my life, but it's something I just do for myself, you know? I'm just always making music.
anything, you should message them. They probably would. I highly doubt they're excited about the fact one of their first units has to just sit around, you know, after it's fixed. So I definitely think they would probably sell you it as a refurbish. Uh, kind of off of the transverse question. Are you using a brighter high pitch for... No. Uh, I still do. Um, I'm just vibing. No voice I've ever used is uncomfortable for me or fatiguing. Otherwise, I wouldn't use it. It's kind of rule number one of using voice in general. Honestly, you want to know the truth? People shamed me about having such a feminine voice, so I darkened it to please society. That's the real truth. I felt like I was getting stigmatized and uh, people were judging me and uh, people were nagging me about being so bright. So, I still am, like when I'm, you know, talking to people in certain contexts, but right now it's kind of chill. I'm in my studio playing music, so yeah, I'm just vibing. So, Philia, what is the instrument? Uh, it's a Lumitone, indeed. It is a microtonal keyboard. Maybe uh, IMC Lorraine. Uh, I'm not a jukebox, though, so I'll just sing when I want to sing. I sang earlier in the stream using different qualities. It just, uh, you know, I just, I'm just vibing right now. I'm not taking any requests. I'm not playing anything in particular. I'm just kind of playing whatever the soul feels, you know? certain intervals more than others. I use the intervals that I like the sound of more than others. I use all intervals depending on if they fit, you know, like that's pretty simple, that interval. This one's a little more complex, but it's still got usage. If you asked an artist, do you use certain colors more than other colors? They'd probably be like, yeah, I use a lot of black and white. I use a lot of blue and red and yellow. Um, maybe I use a little less purple because it just comes up less frequently, uh, depending on the artist. It's just, uh, for me, it's certain colors pop up more in my mind. Can you vibe harder? Yes, I can vibe way harder. I'm actually not vibing right now because my Lumitone's laggy because I'm trying to put my sound out to the stream so I've got like half a second of latency. But if I didn't have latency, I'd vibe harder. sound module on the Lumitone. It's purely a, a MIDI controller. What's this message say? Yes, it's a keyboard that plays pitches between the normal pitches. That is accurate. So between this note, between an octave, I've got...
I am monitoring the audio directly in my headphones. I don't have it coming from the stream. Would you guys hear two copies of it or something? I'm probably going to delete this whole stream after I'm done with it. Just because it's been full of like tech issues and stuff. I don't like having that trash on my channel. get into a flow.
frustrating. Okay, I'm done. It did it again. Okay, take care, everybody. Actually, I'll play a little longer. I can't let the glitchy stream get, up, get me in a bad mood. I just want to jam, you know? infuriating. Yeah, it's cutting out on the, it's cutting out on piano tech. It's not, has nothing to do with the Lumitone. It's just, uh, I think cause I'm streaming or something, it's like hitting like a poly limit. I, I don't really know, but it's just freezing a lot. I really love that sound though. But I was just starting to get into it. Every time I've started to get into it, it's happened, you know? Very frustrating. Uh, oh my god, right when I started singing. So that's all I will say. It's extremely frustrating. Um...
on Nidio, this is just intonation. There's a 34 note just intonated Neji.
in such a better mood now. The instrument did not break on me that entire time. My brain is tickled. My joy levels have increased. <sighs> it's so frustrating when your musical things don't do things right. Very frustrating stuff, but we're getting the correct stuff now. <laughs>
Oh yeah, so I was just saying this is a 34 note just intonation, 34 neji out of 73 and three. Um, this is a tetracot mapping, which was supplied to me by um, Mike Battaglia. Uh, you can hear me now, right? Check, you should be able to hear me. Um, weird, let me know if the second you can hear me because you should be able to. I think it's just delayed and so you guys actually can hear me now but I'm like 35 seconds in the future. So, okay, yeah. So it's a 34 note uh, just intonation. Uh, it's in a tetracot mapping, which is kind of fun because it makes my brain, I like super fourths. And so the fact it's got a super fourth like diatonically, that's really nice. The, the regular fourth is here. Super fourth. I pretty much only use tunings that have super fourths in them uh, in some way or another. I actually prefer the super fourth around 530, 537. Then I do the 551, eight against 11 ratio. Um, I don't know why I just do. Uh, it's just one of my favorite sounds. Is those, those really sort of darker super fourths where they're in between like a, you know, a harmonic fourth and a three, four. Um, it's kind of a flat nine or a dark nine, regular nine, super nine. Prime 73 tetracot mapping. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's got a, right, that's the diatonic line in the center, but I wasn't really playing too much of that. I've kind of figured out where most of my extensions are. The thing I like about this mapping the most is up or down any is a deesis. Whereas like on the 31 note mapping, you know, you have to like skip a note to get the deesis, which is a little, um, a little less ideal for me because I really like to do like little chroma shifts as I'm playing. Is the super fourth the 11th harmonic? Uh, not sort of, I mean, the 11th harmonic is a super fourth, um, but it's uh, not the super fourth I was playing. Here's the, here's, here's what this tuning has in terms of harmonic 11. It's okay. But here's what it's got in terms of other super fourth. And here's the regular fourth. Let me do it on piano, you'll hear it easier. Now I'm exiting my, I'm exiting just intonation and now I'm entered into the realm of EDO, which is poop, but whatever. So here's a super fourth. It's 529. And here's a, the normal fourth. And diatonic, like. But this has, and it also has, poop yes that is right <laughs> yeah that's why i was able to get lost when i was in just intonation right like when i was playing on the keyboard stuff it was all right it was all right it was all right but then um yeah you know cam 
I wasn't feeling the 217 Boston Cats. I wasn't feeling it. Um, well, you guys can like whatever you want. I mean, I'm not saying like EDO is poop objectively. I mean, you guys are listening to me make music, you know? So it's like, I don't care if you disagree with me. That's what I think. Um, but yeah, so um, Cam, I, I played with the... I play with the Boston Cat layout. Well, honestly, I, I like the Tetra Cot layout because I like thinking differently. I feel like being in the Boston Cat layout makes me feel like I'm playing like diatonic all the time. It's really tempting when it's in Boston Cat just to go. I was doing this earlier, but you know, it's really tempting when it's in that kind of stuff to just do things like, you know, like play functionally. So I like having at least one layout in my mix-up that's completely unlike diatonic map. And then it makes me play, it filters me differently. Because I feel like I'm, it's way too, okay, this, this Boston Cat in 31 has it so all the DSCs are like hidden. And I really don't like that. I would prefer to have chains of fifths that are separated by 38 cents. Because then it's like, yeah, I mean... I'll, exactly, Vincenzo. I completely agree with that. I'll use this for when I'm playing with other musicians or, you know, um, I think Mike Vitali and I are going to do a, like a, a duet or quartet kind of thing. And I mean, I'll probably use that for that, right? Because it's just so, it's just so familiar. But it doesn't make me think differently, you know? I like the tetracot layout because it's like, I'm not a huge, I mean, I like how it sounds as like a, just a linear tetracot scale, but I'm not like super crazy with it. So it always makes me reach differently, you know? And honestly, a lot of the voicings in the, I know Cam, I'm so excited. I think Mike's amazing. And we've been, we uh, had a chat the other night and we're, we're gearing up to do some collaboration, which is really exciting because I haven't really collaborated with anybody, but I would love to collaborate with uh, Mike because I think they're just, uh, he's a monster player. So, um, great musician. Um, but yeah, so the uh, the tetracot layout also makes some chords easier to play. Like major sevens with uh, major sevens become this, which is how they feel on the. It's like major seven becomes what like D major seven on the piano feels like, where you've got two here and then two above it. You know, where it's like that kind of feeling. That's pretty much major seven in tetracot. Um, I haven't talked to Adam Neely directly. I know he's heard my music. Um, somebody sent him my music and I think he commented on it or something at one point, but I've never actually had a conversation with him. See, and now I'm back in Boston Cat layout. So it's like, why don't I just play this? Because neutrals are hard to access or harder to access, right? So it's like, I get, when I'm in the Boston Kit later, I feel like I'm, I feel like I might as well just go, cause I mean, this is pretty, you know? Do you have any social media I can follow you on? Yeah, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at this place here. Hold on, Instagram, I don't even know what it is. Digital harmonic, here's my Instagram. You uh, can follow me on Patreon, too. Oh, looks like the cat's out of the bag. Sorry, I've been spoiling it. I'm stoked as hell, so, you know. Bag's out of the cat. Oh, look at that. Lumitone glitch. Only one in the world who glitched Lumitone. Especially in 
31. Gospel in 31 sounds absolutely amazing. ornamentation not much I'll be honest with you I used to shit all over the blues and I used to think the blues sucked when I played in 12 notes but over the years I've started to love the blues like in college when I was like studying jazz piano uh, my piano teacher and my combo instructor would always try to get me to play the blues and people would start to play the blues and I would just like stop playing and I would just like look down at the keyboard um, it's never been my thing you know now, I do like playing the blues when I've got an organ. Give me an organ and I'll, wah, 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 you know. But um, I actually started getting into the blues in the last three months. And now that I've got microtonal, I think blues are way more interesting because you have so many more, you have so many more, um, yeah. Aria Park, I asked this earlier, but do you have any plans uploading the rest of your discography to streaming services like Spotify or Apple Music? Uh, I should at some point. I just haven't. Um, I think only one of my songs is on Spotify right now, which is kind of absurd, but um, I just don't use those services, so I forget other people use those services, but I guess that's kind of the main way people consume music, so I guess I should put it on there. I, in a way, I, um, I just like to make music for myself, so um, it's really cool that everybody's here listening, um, but I kind of just do this because I like it. Um, so that's why I forget to upload it to Spotify because it's not like, ooh, I need to make sure everyone can hear my stuff, but I should do that. that that'll be something I will, I will try to do soon. Yeah, blues isn't really meant for 12 notes. I agree. I can't even do it here, but there's so many cool things you could do for blues in 31, honestly. and I'd play faster. Irish folk music sounds absolutely incredible in 31 like uh like a Danny boy or something oh my god especially those like minor two like those things are absolutely just incredible thank you I appreciate that sweeter than anything I see you in chat. I love you. And also drive safe.
And also we need to take acid again and play on the lumitone together. Since here's an example, when Leonard Bernstein, Bernstein, whatever, wrote Maria, he meant for this tritone, not, but yeah, 12 notes is much closer to, If I'm doing drugs, I'm playing, I'm playing J.I. <laughs> you got me messed up. <laughs> I'll just play a 31. No, you don't have to redact it. You're good. That's funny. I thought it was good.
back hand, they are sending me an entire new Lumitone. This one has a hardware problem. Apparently, it's the only one out of 50 that they've sent that has a problem to any, for anybody. So, you know, it's okay. They're going to let me, you know, I get to like keep it, you know, till the other box arrives and then I'm going to put this one in the new box and send this one back. Then they're going to test it. So no complaints there. They've treated me really well about it. But apparently I'm the first one with a problem on the Lumitone. out cam i don't know if you were here when i was showing you the other stuff it also has this weird bug where if i press it and hold the key and then switch it that part of the section stays i'm probably just gonna buy two lumitones but yeah i should do that see now it's stuck it just stays like that now until i switch kind of weird right Not all of them stay though, just some of them. There's other weird bugs too. Like if I hold this one down and I press other keys in the cluster, the other keys don't light up. But if I let go, then they do. If I do this, and then, um, what's the other what's the other bug I figured out? I don't know, there's some bug I figured out that makes the lights stick on. It's really weird. So, but I'm the only one that's had that problem. I don't know what happened. Just so you're aware to try to avoid it on yours. I was just doing this one night. I was just going, um... And that's what did it. I, I don't know. I hit that chord. I hit it pretty hard, but it wasn't like super hard. But then it just, uh, all of a sudden it like exploded with color. And then uh, it's been doing that since. Definitely not. They were saying it was a connection that probably got screwy in the ship. Yeah, it could have been anything. I, I will say that when I first got the keyboard, I wrote about that note. I even took a video of that note. I was like, this is weird. This key feels different than the rest. And you know, they told me to recalibrate it, so I did, and, th and that kind of fixed it. And then it randomly just uh, blew up. Ooh, that's cool. back to synths that won't break. I'm going to go into a 31 tone prime modal tuning. This is 23 and 6. It's like a five some more tertial triprimal kind of hybrid thing.
combination. Don't you hear that fusion? It's even more fused than, than 31. It's like, like. <laughs>
streaming. My dad just got home from like 2,000 miles away. Scared the shit out of me.
okay, so isn't that just crazy? That's actually a patch from Witchcraft. You guys might recognize it from the B section. <laughs> serum that's synth based and then I was using piano tech for the keyboard stuff you guys might recognize this one from witchcraft 2 Witchcraft scents are, are kind of crazy. Am I right? That B section's got some crazy stuff. I think this is also from it. Wait, no, this is nice though. Let me put this in 34 real fast.
that is where we call it today, folks. Two hours and 45 minutes. Um, let's see. The first 30 minutes, I was frustrated. I was in a bad mood because the synth kept being weird. I had a tech issue. And um, so, uh, but the rest of it, the last two hours was, was pretty fun. So I will give myself a little bit of fanfare outro in 31. It's so laggy, so latent. Thank you all so much for coming and listening to me play.
Spelling doesn't matter to me. teach music lessons um i'm extremely like that person said i'm really high in demand for my voice lessons so <sighs> i'm pretty much maxed out so which means that my music students have to compete at the same rates as my voice students which is pretty expensive for a music lesson but if you want to come and study with me you can email me at amelia e rose at gmail.com um i'm always happy to have more music students uh let's see and then how did i get so good um, lots of, uh, practice and worship. I studied music composition in university, and I basically wrote music every single day of my life for about 10 to 16 hours a day for about seven years straight, eight years straight, and then I ended up creating a voice thing and then that's became really popular so these days I don't do as much music as I used to because I just don't have enough time but music is my my soul and it's my spirituality and um you know I just really love it so I just really like listening to sound there's no tricks to getting good I would just sit around and I would sit around in 12 EDO and I would just take a chord and I would just try to hear every single possible combination of notes that I could put above or below that chord inside that chord and so that's translated to microtonality because then I know well I can do normal Lydian or I could do like up Lydian or I could just do major with a super major addition 
I could do major with an up six, or major with both sixes, or major with all three sixes. So I don't know. But I'm definitely happy to teach anybody. I can teach you um, anything you want to know about sound, honestly. It's kind of my purpose in this universe. anyone else lurking I am not a natural like you know some people they like pick up an instrument and they're just like boom wow how'd that person get so good that wasn't me um, I think I'm a natural in terms of harmony but not a natural in terms of every other element of music I had to grind really hard in fact my best friend when I was growing up he was a natural and I wasn't so you know for instance I was a drummer and then he would just sit on my drum set and play things that were better than mine, even though he wasn't a drummer and he didn't have a drum set, right? So it was very frustrating because, uh, you know, I was supposed to be like the drummer or whatever. And um, I just got crushed by him because he was a natural and I wasn't. So I could hear I could hear music in my head, though. So I decided I would download Audacity and make music by, like, stitching together samples. And I tried to make... The first thing I ever made was a, I, I normally don't talk about this, the first thing I ever made was a mashup of samples from StarCraft Brood War and the NFL theme, and I turned it into this like epic like StarCraft, I mashed up StarCraft Brood War's music with like fanfares of just random things, and then um, I remember the NFL fanfare and it was like, and like was there. And then the second thing I ever made in Audacity was a horror movie audio portrait where the whole point was you're so it's supposed to make it sound like you're walking at night alone and then you're like being like chased or like you know I tried to create like a narrative like auditory collection of things and um, that was cool and then my second thing I ever did then is I got Fruity Loops you know the old the old-fashioned way I, I legally own it now but I got Fruity Loops the old-fashioned way and uh, then I started um, Composing and I put together an album pretty quickly. The album was called uh, Past the Horizon, lol. I was like 15 or 16. And it was this really, I've got some of the tracks here. You guys want to hear some of my oldest music? Before I go, you want to hear the, you want to hear where I was in 2005 with music? I'll go ahead and show you. Let's see here. My old music. I have everything I've ever made from 2005 forward. There's only, there's only one section of sound that I lost in the last 16, 17 years or whatever, however long it's been. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see, where do I find it? Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, music, my Z drive. My big hard drive is called my Z drive. Isn't that cool? Cause you know, I'm Z, lol. Okay, let's see, um, here we go. Old music listening to music folder number one before i go yeah i've been here way too long i'm probably going to clip the first 45 minutes off this video when i upload it to youtube just because i felt like i was in a crabby mood because my tech was all glitchy and i don't know i wasn't vibing but now i've been vibing for a little bit okay here we go my old music this was made in this isn't my oldest oldest but this is pretty old stuff let's see all right, here's something from 2009. Um, I was in a, <laughs> there's, there's just, there's just so much actually. Um, okay, all right. Um, there's just so much. This is a metal project I did in 2008 called Nosebleed.
another one? track I did when I was like, I don't know, I was like 15 or 16 or maybe 17 on that track, 18? This is when I was 17.
okay so there's that um i can find stuff that's even older here's a weird one with bad autotune this is me singing into a headset a usb headset when i was like 17 16. Oh, I don't know if I want to play this. Now one. we're alive. My heart and my well, it's so bad. It's so bad. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, here's screaming into a, a USB. Dude, I wrote like seven metal albums in my life already. Maybe eight. This is called um, Pressure by Soul System. This, I don't know if I want to play this one. This one's from 2006. This is even before the metal. Okay, yeah, this one has terrible singing. Okay, this one right here, this is even older than all of those. This is probably 2005, 2004. No, they're not on my channel. You realize I've written like 10 or 12 albums that I've never released. I have so much music that I've never released ever. Here's a good one. I wrote this in 2009. This one's kind of cool, I think. If this is what I think it is. Yeah, this one's cool. This is in 2009. This still sounds like a modern thing. Um, and I wrote it all that long ago. Take a listen. This when I was like 18. interesting you said Venetian snares I used to play World of Warcraft with my friend Bobby and we would listen to Z Venetian snares Sazamar Madar and we would clear like wow raids like we would we would do like instances together and we'd like hit fucking we'd turn on Sazamar Madar and we would literally I would tank and he would do uh he would heal for me and we would just like two person instances that was when I was like 2010 I was maybe I don't know I was like 18 at that time or something like that um that's so funny that you said that though I used to listen to a lot of Venetian snares I don't know what this is. Oh, some ambient stuff. What's this? Feel the. Oh, a little bit. A little chip tune.
Okay, here you go. This is the song. This is the only old song I have that I've been thinking about redoing. I I've really wanted to. I've wanted to release this piece. This is from 2017. I want to release it in just intonation and with my updated vocals, because you know I don't sound like a boy. Anymore. Every little shuffling footstep I find, you are closer to the center. Fractalization. Always begins with the multiplication of self-identity. Undivided self-serenity. to the center fractalization always begins with the multiplication of self-identity undivided self-serenity microtonal piece I ever created by the way so if you guys want to hear that this is in 2015 um, this piece is weird it does additive prime numbers up to 113 and then back and then I don't know one night someone came over and we were just messing around and we made this uh, that was one of the best songs I've ever heard I would love to update it I'm, I'm thinking about it so I'm glad you guys like that 
I've got acoustic drums now too, so I would do it with acoustic drums. Yeah, Steven, welcome. Um, I'm just showing people my old music. Um, I played Lumitone for like three hours, and now I'm just going through the archives. This is my first microtonal piece I ever created. seconds. A friend just came over one night, we got really stoned, and we just made this. It's 11 minutes, I'm not gonna play all of it though. We like squeaked doors and shit. And this is the prime number thing. It's really weird. Oh, no, I, I made it in 2015, the year, not the time signature. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Brock, I love that. Lumitone's too future, now we're going in the past. This piece is so weird. album was an hour and 10 minutes it's a single song but most people don't know that let me get to the microtonal part oh this part's crazy here's the prime thing additive primes all the way from one to like 113 and back down with rhythm it's really weird right here Additive rhythm thing. These are samples from when I was in Thailand. The people talking in the back are people on the street in a street market in Chiang Mai. You'll hear little pots and pans that cling around too. It's people trying to sell and, and give out, do food on the street. I could hear some sick jazz drums, some light ride, flat ride. A lot of this. Here's the microtonal part. This is like the first microtonal thing I ever made, other than the first section in this piece. There's like this water thing, and then here's microtonal. Yeah, super dry flat ride. I have two flat rides on my kit right now. Akira, that's really amazing. Um, Amon Tobin was one of the most influential people to me ever, so um, I'm, that's a big honor, honestly. Amon Tobin's I Sam blew my mind. Amon Tobin's Chaos Theory was the sound of my youth. My favorite, one of my favorite games ever was Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, and Amon Tobin did the soundtrack for it, and I just spent so much time in that universe. I don't listen to Amon Tobin very much, but I, I love Amon Tobin. And I went to I Sam twice in Chicago. So this is Microtone.
Yes, I'm purely all effect symbols right now. I have two splashes. Uh, no, I've got a stack, a splash. I've got two flat rides. I don't even use a crash. I've got two crashes just sitting on the floor. I've got another effect symbol too. Oh, here's the additive thing. Anyway, so yeah, there's that that piece. That was one of my first microtonal pieces ever. Um, I'm trying to find like even earlier stuff, but it's hiding from me right now. Here's some harmony experience experiments. I used to make etudes in weird scales. This is Ionian flat two, uh, sharp five, something something else. Here's Lydian flat two, sharp six, basic chords. This is like 2015. I was so, so, so into harmony for so long. Vocal, vocal harmony? Oh, it's that thing. This is interesting. Oh, wait, where's it at? There's one. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go. Unreliable rhythm. Here we go, check this shit out. This is crazy. I've, I've wanted to release this piece, but I lost the file for it. Hey Freya, I'm really glad to hear that. That's honestly awesome. Last thing before I go, since my camera died. You guys want to hear some music I've been making recently? Some stuff I haven't released? Yep. That, that was good battery life, though. It lasted exactly 3 hours and 24 minutes. Not bad. Okay, here's some stuff I haven't released. Um, I've posted it here and there every now and then. But uh, this is one thing I've been making. Where's it at? I've been making a lot of stuff lately. It's hidden. Here we go. Wait, I think I've got more of it though. I don't think that's all of it that I exported. Maybe it is. It's so sick. Right here. Wait, here we go. It's so quiet though.
right back to the 2005. Uh, let's see here. I've been working on some other stuff too, but I haven't exported it. I've got some, um, I've, I've been, I'm kind of making uh, the next electronic banger. You know what I'm saying? I didn't release this. It's kind of the second part of the video I released that was pure just intonated. I showed somebody this recently, but here's some, um, this is, do you guys, this is some modern metal that I wrote. Um, this is metal I wrote like two, three months ago. It's in just intonation. <laughs> I agree that J.I. is the future of metal, and I think it's absolutely fucking shocking that other metal bands haven't gotten on that yet. I kind of want to beat everybody to the punch and then have a metal band that blows up and then quit metal after like two albums. I want to name it Hive Mind Consensus Protocol. Oh, I also made this. This is a hyper pop, I guess is what you maybe call this. Do you want to grow? Do you want to pop? Do you want to grow? Starting on the other fuck me on the floor. Chill me by the neck. I didn't work much on this, but I got the idea for this when I was in the hospital, grow? sick and dying of celiac disease. Pop? But I'm better now. There's another piece I was making. What is it called? Holy shit. There was a piece I was making that was kind of poppy. Um, oh, 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 oh. Wait till you hear this one. This one's crazy. If I can find it. Um, do, 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 do. Here it is, decorporealizing, is that it? Yeah, this is sick. I'm glad you guys like the hyper pop stuff. This is kind of nasty.
there's that. That's uh, decorporealizing. Made one night when I was feeling really fucking bad and I felt like I was decorporealizing. Yeah, it has the illusion of 4 4. It's because there's a, it's just a giant metric modulation. Like if I open up the project, uh, maybe I'll just open up the project and show you. Check it out. Um, it's a, you know, somebody asked me if I would finish that. I completely forgot about it till just now. So yeah, I guess I'll finish it. I just forgot I even made that. It's pretty sick. Um, let's see here. I forgot what I saved it as though. I think I saved it as goddess. Wait, uh, or hex witchcraft. Where is that? Um, HCP goddess. No, Anastasia. No, um, I make so much music. It's hard to even know what the fuck I'm making. Uh, Lyra. No, distorted drum parts. No. <sighs> Climbing light. No. Um, I don't even remember what I named it or what I saved the file as. Color wheels. I think that might be it. I can't remember what I named it as. I make like lots of stuff all the time, so it's hard to even know where I'm at with things usually. I release a very tiny fraction of what I create musically. Um, here's a cool chord while we wait for it to load. Oh wait, no, that's not what I want to found. That's a boring chord. This one? Uh, Gwendolyn, my camera died. So to see what a Lumitone is, you might want to jump to the first three hours of the stream. Right now I'm just showing people music and stuff that I made. Oh, there we go. Found it. All right, I'm, I'm gonna share my screen. Hold on. Okay, I'll show you that metric modulation you were asking about. Um, yeah, so I'll share my screen real fast. This is the project file for that tune that you guys all just liked quite a lot. Uh, window capture. I think I can just go screen capture. Display capture here, this one. Okay, can you guys see that? Oh wait, hold on. Let me make it smaller. I forgot I was even making this. Okay, so this is a, you're asking about the rhythm. This is a really uh, crazy, This is a really, really crazy metric modulation. I'll show you. I'll, I'll turn the click on and I'll just let it ride with the click and you can hear it.
there you go. And you can see all this bass was live. All I would do is turn on the Lyra and just play. I would just play really long segments. And then after I would play the segments, I would just cut them up and so the uh, Lyra does go wee. This instrument's crazy. like other ones oh, that's the same one yeah the lyre is crazy that's why i have two of them because they're just they're insane instruments yo okay well there it is i need to go because i got stuff i gotta do Nice uh, jamming with y'all. If you got any questions or anything, you know, hit me up. Um, actually, maybe don't hit me up. No, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, I really went Lyra 16. That's exactly what I did. And I've got one right here and one right here. And they just sit on my desk and they're always plugged in. So in between work, when I'm working and uh, I've got lessons all day, I can just open up the Lyra and just start screaming with it and then just get back to work, you know. It's pretty convenient. Um... Yeah, well, that was fun. Showed you guys the future, showed you guys the past, showed you guys the present. And uh, for that, I shall now dip off. Yes, I do teach sound design. If you'd like to come study sound design, music composition, audio production, whatever it is, if you, anybody wants to learn anything sound related, you can hit me up. Now, that being said, I do have a wait list of private students right now that's somewhere in the order of 4,000 to 5,000 people waiting. Uh, I just launched group classes to try and help that. And... Um, you know, uh, if you're interested in music lessons, though, I can bump you to the front of that waiting list because I would love to have more music in my life. Um, so, yeah. Reach out if you have any of that interest. Amelia E. Rose at gmail.com. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.